everyone, I'm Anna Newton. And I'm Mark Newton. And we're going to answer some questions about our time at university. So I studied a Bachelor of Science in Psychology at uni and I actually started my blog that Anna edit whilst I was at uni in, in, second year, in my second year bedroom. And when I graduated I went into beauty PR and beauty editorial roles and I did that for a year or two before taking my blog full time two years after I graduated. And I've been writing my lifestyle blog making YouTube videos, Instagram, all that kind of stuff since for the last five years. So I studied civil engineering at university. I did a, a BEng in civil engineering. I also did a uh, one year foundation degree prior to that at Nottingham. I then went into a uh, smaller subcontracting firms for a couple of years and I now work as an assistant project manager at a water company uh, in their capital delivery schemes. So I asked on Twitter and Instagram stories for some of your questions and you guys got back to me and they kind of fall into four categories, sort of pre-uni, moving in, while straight uni and then the aftermath. So we're going to go through the questions in that order. So then the first section of pre-uni, Megan asked, how did you choose a university and what sort of things did you look for and how did you narrow it down? So how did I choose uni? I, I'd already been to university, bad course, didn't <laughs> like the place. Basically then decided oh, I'm going to do civil engineering. So that was my first kind of decision. I was like, I want to do civil engineering. And then I basically took a list of the top unis uh, that did civil engineering, had a look at which ones did foundation year courses and had a look at those. And Nottingham was one of them and had a look at the campus, loved it. And that was my main choice. So for you, was it the campus? Or because Mark's cousin actually also went to uni. Yes. So he knew people there. Yeah, I think it was just the whole vibe, like all the facilities that they had there. When I did like the open day, had a look yeah. around, the campus was amazing. The halls were nice. The facilities were brilliant. I feel like mine was a similar thing. I got all the prospectuses in. The Nottingham Uni prospectus, yeah. I remember, was really good. It was just very like chic and nicely done. It really sold it to me. And I did a similar thing, like looking at where did the course that I wanted to do, looking at kind of the top unis list and I was working out I lived in Brighton and I didn't want to be too close to home but I didn't want to be too far away either so sort of the Midlands for me was the perfect perfect kind of length of time away from home and so Nottingham I went to the open day I went to about six different open days and Nottingham for me just everything clicked into place the campus was beautiful the course was right the weather was amazing when I went to visit and it just that was like number one choice for me and thankfully I got in, yay. Lucy asked, I'm asking this question for my son who is thinking of applying for English at Nottingham Uni. What is the best thing about Nottingham and what is the worst? Best thing about Nottingham I'd, I'd say is definitely the, whole, the campus. Yeah, campus is beautiful. Yeah, everything, like, so beautiful. yeah. Just being based on campus and in the first year being based on campus anyway. Yeah, I think for me it's the campus as well, it's so beautiful. And the community that is there, it's quite a small city so there's a lot of students yeah. and we all sort of stick together especially in second and third years as well we all live on like certain roads over in Lenton and it just feels like a really nice community and I'll say the worst thing is that you don't want to leave I never wanted to leave did you not? We don't want to leave uni no that's true so the next section is moving in and Lily asks how did you find the settling in process from uni, moving away from home? Is there anything that helped you if you got homesick? Thanks. I guess for you, you'd already been to uni I'd already before. Been, I'd already I mean, been. you were from Birmingham, so it wasn't too far away. Well, no, it wasn't. I'd already been to uni that previous year, and then I'd had a year out before that. So I was a bit older That's anyway. Right. So I was 20 when I started uni, so ready to live away from home anyway. For me, I cried when my parents left. I was devastated. I cried. I was like, this is the worst. I want to go home. Made a terrible mistake. And then I met the girl who lived next door to me. We became like best buds. She now lives like, what, three minutes down the road. We see, still see her and her boyfriend who was Mark's old housemate all the time. And then my parents, I was like, hey, you can go now, I'm fine. So I think just really immersing yourself, throwing yourself into it, making friends and That's really what I always say. Yeah. yeah. Just, just go for it. Yeah, if there's things on offer, just do it. Maisie said, what would you say are your uni essentials and top tips for packing your whole life into a tiny room? I had like a CD player then. Yeah. So I took my CD player, my hi-fi with me, with my CDs. That was really cool. Books as well. Shall I say what my one packing essential is? Take food. On the day that we moved into halls, it was my birthday and my mum had made me a birthday cake. And then I was known as like birthday cake girl and everyone wanted to be my friend because I had cake. Oh yeah, cake's a good idea cake. on the first. There you go. Um, Packing essential. JB asks, how did you network and connect with other students at uni? I guess I'm, I'm just friends with the people that I was in halls with. Yeah, the people then, who you're in halls with are kind of 
instantly in your kind of network because yeah. obviously you're going to live with them for the next year. Mm. Also course friends and I don't know if this is still a thing but when we went to uni there was a Facebook group set up for Willoughby Hall which was the hall that we were in at Nottingham Uni and so you could kind of all chat on there and sort of say hello to people and say what course you were doing and I met a girl called Jasmine who was on the same course as me and we saw we kind of spotted each other on the first day and I was like oh my god you're Jasmine yeah you're Anna and we, we were friends ever since she was my course friend from like day one we lived in the same halls did the same course so we're always like walking to and from lectures together so I think it's just really good to throw yourselves in go to um during freshers week go to the societies events that they have yeah, that's good, so you can go and you can join societies for like a couple of quid and sort of meet new people there but there's so many opportunities to meet new people there's, the same there's a society for everyone as oh well. yeah <laughs> loads of them so i'd recommend doing that natasha says any tips for making friends at freshers if you're not a keen drinker and also there was a lot of questions about this as well i think people think oh my god i'm going to uni i'm gonna have to get sloshed every night yeah, and it's no. not really the case you can that option is there but it's really not the case i'm i'm not a huge drinker and kind of never have been there was the odd occasion on pub golf where i would like let myself go but not being a keen drinker it doesn't mean you can't go out clubbing you can go out clubbing you just have a drink or two or none mm. at all no big deal really cheap night out literally just pay for your taxi there and back and also just try and find people who are in the same position as you again look at societies look at sports yeah. teams all those sorts of things there will be other people mm. you won't be the only one. No, I think society is a really good thing to head for. The next section is about whilst you are there. And Sophie said, do you have any tips for maintaining good grades, a job and a social life? Seems I can't seem to find that balance. The way I did it, I didn't work in term time, yeah. but I worked in holiday time, that kind of, so I just worked at a part-time job holiday, holiday time. I would just max my hours out over the summer and over Christmas. And that would leave um, you with more time to have yeah, social yeah. life and study yeah, dreams. Exactly, yeah, term yeah. Time. I actually did work during term time. I didn't really have the option not to, otherwise I literally wouldn't have been able to afford my bills. So I kind of did it all. And I feel like it's just a learning process. At uni you really learn how to manage your time. And then when you get into the real like job world afterwards, you realise that you have a lot of free time at uni. It depends what course you're doing. My course I think I had about four or five hours of lectures in final year. Maybe it was a bit more, maybe it was seven. So it depends what course you're doing, but you do have a lot of free time. You you think you don't because you sleep a lot and you nap a lot. I know that that's, that's what I Speak did. for yourself. Oh, come on, you napped. Oh, I was Never napped, slept you late, never napped. <laughs> you slept until like 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but I never yeah, napped. Yeah, might as well have had a nap. Katia asks, a lot of the time people find out they actually want to pursue a career inspired by societies and extracurricular activities. Was this the case for you? If so, did anyone help you in the career department? I guess this is more a question for me because you sort of did your course that was related to your career and have taken mm. all of the steps. For me, doing a course in psychology and ended up doing blogging as a full-time job doesn't really correlate. I would say that no, I didn't get any help from the career service when I was there, but that's because I didn't seek it out. And since I've gone back to Nottingham Uni and actually taken part in like an alumni talk, which was nuts, and their career team seemed so lovely and so nice and really open to the idea of the digital world. I feel like back when I graduated, which would have been 2011, blogging wasn't really a thing, the digital media wasn't so much of a big thing. So I feel like now, if that is your interest or whatever your interest is, I feel like the gates are so much more open career-wise. I didn't, again, I didn't make the most of it either. If I was to do it again, yeah. I would say, I was a bit nervous about going to those events because it was like industry, there were people from industry there and I was a yeah. bit like nervous about oh, I didn't know anything yet but don't be just go I don't you know now being in industry like I wouldn't expect people to like yeah I know what have you, got to, what have you like, got to lose you might as well just go and just go and try and network and get any contacts that you can I think yeah. it'd be so worthwhile like, 100% just do it okay on to the post uni section Camilla said I actually just recently graduated college and I'm interested in how you dealt with post grad life how did you keep in touch with college friends and how did you stay productive without the structure of school so how did you deal with post grad life it was quite a shock to the system <laughs> well yeah yeah it was quite yeah, a shock to the system is. yeah because uh, well uh, the first site that I was on was a 7.30 5.30 construction <laughs> site so that was pretty that was a bit of a shock to the system <laughs> but it was fine because again you start a job you people know you're a graduate they know that you've done you've had you know theory and you, you've kind of gone through all the theory but you don't necessarily know all that stuff mm. uh, you know you people can't expect you to you know on day one 
just know all this stuff yeah instantly, don't so. don't be afraid to ask questions oh yeah 100 percent. i graduated and i had a job in a call center because i was like i just want to be able to earn money and sort of work out what i want to do for a bit and i actually ended up having that job for two weeks that is like my shortest job really? ever that's all it was yeah two weeks because i ended up finding a beauty pr internship and i did that I didn't earn any money for six months, but out of that I ended up with a full-time role. So I feel like it's about experimenting, it's about interning, it's about gaining experience wherever you can. And then I think in terms of keeping in touch with college friends, it's so easy now with WhatsApp, yeah, WhatsApp. Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram stories, they're always messaging me. Know that you're gonna disperse probably across the world and that's cool, it means that you've got really good excuses to yeah. go abroad. And to finish off, Anna asked, did you ever struggle with your worries about career after campus? So I guess it's like a similar question. Yeah. Did you ever worry? Yes. I remember in last year like getting really panicky and signing up to the Boots grad scheme but only getting halfway through the application mm. process because I was like, what am I doing? This isn't for me. Yeah, I am. Um, so because I, I got a 2 2, I was panicking because I couldn't find many grad schemes that took two twos mm. and everyone else was getting grad schemes and applying for grad schemes and I was just getting petrified about not being able to get a grad scheme so I applied for one that did two two and I remember having a telephone interview that went oh, oh, I remember horribly that. wrong like horribly oh. wrong I just the, I, the lady on the other end of the phone asked me a question and I basically just didn't answer <laughs> like I couldn't answer the question oh man but then I kind of moved on from it and I was like look I just need to look for other what do I really want to do? Looked at all my kind of stuff that I'd done module wise and yeah, I think that's probably where someone like like, like the career service would have really, yeah. really, really helped. And I just didn't I just didn't think about it. Also it's completely okay for your career to kind of go like that. It's not gonna be like a smooth it might be, but chances are it perhaps won't be this like smooth transition where you know exactly what you want to do and you're just progressing your role. Like know that it's okay to chop and change and to like take bits of one job and be like, that job was great and I enjoyed that bit, but I wasn't so keen on that mm. bit. And then moving to another role that has more of the bit that you like. So it's completely all right to chop and change around. It's, it's a process. Overall, I think uni is great. We had a great time at Nottingham Uni. We met each other, we're married. You might meet your future husband or wife, who knows? But it's good fun and I hope this has been helpful for you. Good luck to anyone who is getting grades. Good luck to anyone who's applying for uni. Exams are finished, aren't they? They're getting their exam results oh, well, really good. soon. So good luck everyone. Good luck and um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Bye. Bye.